Hey everyone, Michael Lunder here with another workshop for the Science Fair Foundation, uh, all about uh, how, what does an awesome STEM project look like? This is going to be a really fun one hour workshop. Uh, as you can see, I'm here in my kitchen on a very rainy, cloudy, almost even foggy afternoon here on the unceded territory of the Musqueam, Squamish, and the tsleil So happy that you've all uh, come here to join us. Uh, you are here, you've got questions, maybe you're working on a science fair project, uh, a STEM project, and you want to make it awesome. Of course, you want to make it awesome. And we have found someone uh, that knows what an awesome STEM project looks like. And that is uh, Jerry Gurley, who is the teaching assistant coordinator at the University of Victoria. Hi, Jerry. Thanks for joining us. Hello, Michael. Thanks so very much for having me. I'm very excited to be here this afternoon. Yeah, so like I said, you uh, you previously served as the chief judge at the Vancouver Island Regional Science Fair. Uh, so you have uh, a little bit of knowledge about what um, an awesome science fair project looks like, right? Yes, definitely. Through that and then through just in general engagement with science fairs as a judge in numerous roles as well. I'm curious before before we launch into it, like were you a science fair kid yourself like when you were when you were school age? How did you get get into this teaching in science fair uh, business? Um, so I wasn't actually a science fair kid growing up. I didn't have an option to do science fair, uh, you know, when I was a school age kid, but I've always had a love for science and for learning. My dad always regales me with tales of, it was my daughter sitting in the tree, ripping up leaves <laughs> and trying to investigate what was going on in them. <laughs> I think it's been something that's been a big part of my life throughout. And uh, it's brought me to science fairs where I've had a chance for the last uh, almost 10 years now working in different capacities to support students going through science fair or STEM projects and other capacities within. Wonderful. I love that image of you sitting in trees. I was also uh, sitting in trees, but I was looking up at like the clouds and maybe some stars. Uh, would you say biology? Is that like your secret uh, science curiosity uh, superpower there? I think so. Definitely. Yeah. And uh, I think really kind of trees uh, kind of where I really honed in on, you know, the natural world and, you know, the beautiful life that takes place underneath our feet and in our ground, I think is just a beautiful, mind-blowing opportunity. Absolutely. No argument here. Uh, well, Jerry, we have a really fun workshop uh, ready for everyone. And thank you all so much uh, for joining us here in Zoom. If you've never uh, been inside of a Zoom workshop, uh, you can react. You can have a question. You can turn on your microphone if you have a question. There is also a chat function as well that you can put questions in. And if at any point during this workshop you have a question, want something clarified, you can either raise your hand in the Zoom room, you can put a question into the chat. We will address it. We'll answer all of your questions as we go along. And we'll also have some time at the end to answer some questions. So Jerry, we are here to answer that, that very big question that everyone uh, wants to answer. What does an awesome STEM project look like? Perfect, Michael. Can I get a reaction from our <laughs> audience that they can see the screen? So we should see what does an awesome STEM project look like. Looking good to me. All right. Fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> Lovely. Um, so as we get started, uh, I'd just like to take an opportunity to share a bit about where I'm joining from um, as well. Uh, and so specifically, I'm joining you from the Lefungan territories and the lands of the Songhees, Esquimalt, and Wasanic peoples, uh, where my home, where I'm joining you from today, is located. Uh, I, too, am in a cloudy and dreary kind of a, a day here on the, the island in BC, uh, but I am so excited as a visitor and a settler on these lands and territories to have the opportunity to live, work, and play uh, in these spaces. So thank you. So that's, yeah, let's get right into it, Jerry. Um, what are some of the judging criteria that you go through as a previous judge yourself of um, awesome STEM projects? Yeah, definitely, Michael. Uh, so there are kind of three larger categories uh, in which projects are often looked at and the judging criteria can be broken into. Uh, the first being uh, how well the scientific method has been adhered to. And so this was specifically done in a previous workshop uh, within the Science Fair Foundation, uh, the why to how 
understanding the scientific method specifically. Um, so thinking about that hypothesis, thinking about. I think you muted yourself. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> used to support, uh, uh, you know, the project variables that are identified and different ways in which that's kind of interacted. Another aspect, uh, so we're looking at this center column uh, on the page, is how well you communicate your results. So really thinking about specifically, uh, is the report well organized? Uh, is there supporting information provided with appropriate citations or credits as needed? Uh, are the visuals appropriate? And so this is going to be uh, our upcoming workshop that will be taking place in March. That's really going to kind of highlight and talk a little bit about that communication piece as well. And then you have today's session, uh, which really focuses on the creativity uh, that's being displayed within that project. So what is that, that extra little bit of oomph, the extra little bit of uh, material or, or um, innovation that you can provide uh, in your project? And so this can be you know, through personal and independent thought or interest within the project, the way in which you've approached a problem that's led to your science fair project itself, the resourcefulness that might be corresponding with how you unfolded your experimental procedure, uh, how you can kind of articulate and think and share what might be those next steps for your project or recognizing the limitations of your project. And if you were to repeat it again, what might you have done differently or what could you do in the future to modify it or, or kind of you know, make it a little bit better as you continued along. That's a really interesting uh, perspective, Jerry, when I'm thinking about, you know, so many ideas that kids may have and uh, kids may think that they need to have like the most unique idea out there. Um, but what, the way that you're sort of explaining is that it's really coming down to you need a, you know, a unique idea, but more importantly, you need to go through those steps um, so that you can explain um, you do your methodology, um, connecting to the scientific method, um, and all of those sort of like steps that can really make your thought process um, stand out, right? Yeah, yeah. So really having that opportunity to kind of make transparent or bring forward, uh, you know, from the very start of that idea, that inkling in your mind uh, to that final project on the poster board or, you know, virtual representation uh, as you've kind of gone throughout. And so not only through that scientific method, but also that personal journey piece. Why is this important to you? Why does this yeah. matter to you? Exactly. Are you sitting in a tree um, trying to tear apart uh, what's inside of a leaf, right? <laughs> exactly. Or if maybe you're not, maybe you have a little bit more uh, scientific finesse on that project. <laughs> uh, thinking about what does that stem for you? What does that you know, trigger for you? Why are you interested in what goes on on the inside of a leaf that you may mm -hmm. want to uncover or turn into a science fair project or a STEM project? Absolutely. What are some of the resources uh, that we can um, turn to uh, when we want to make an awesome STEM project? Uh, so some of the resources that we can turn to when we think about being resourceful in general, which is one of the key components uh, for judging criteria. So there's generally about 20% or so um, within a STEM or science fair project that corresponds to uh, this creativity and this resourcefulness as well, which is kind of the premise for this, um, this today's workshop. So really thinking about taking that next step and making this awesome you know, STEM project. And so in terms of that resourcefulness, uh, it might correspond to uh, thinking that, okay, maybe everyone in your class is engaging in a, the same or very similar um, project. So maybe you're you know, looking at yeast cultures and the impacts of say different temperatures on yeast growth or something like that. Um, but maybe you don't, it's to make it unique and to make it different, what is that resourcefulness? What is that, that, that uniqueness, that, that individual spin that you can put on your unique project? Alternatively, maybe it's that you don't have access to some equipment that you were hoping to have access to uh, or to utilize for uh, your project uh, for one reason or another. And I know we'll talk later today about some opportunities for, for grants that could be applied for um, to support with that as well. <laughs> um, but 
thinking about that resourcefulness and that opportunity to say, okay, this is, I don't have access to this, you know, specific item that I was looking for, maybe a set of calipers or a measuring tool um, to get really specific um, measurements. But what could be something that you do have at your disposal, or maybe your teacher has, um, you know, in their classroom that they could share? And how can you explain, you know, that innovative approach, why you use this, and kind of how that supported your project overall? Yeah, so I guess, you know, at this stage, these are the things that you could probably bring to your teachers or perhaps peers or people out there in the community if you have already you know got that passion if if you want to do you know yeast and you have that burning question you know then that passion you know is going to come out and someone's going to be able to uh, come to you or at least if you put the ask out there that here's what I want to do can somebody help me yeah, exactly, exactly. So I think we'll talk a little bit uh, in a moment about making it personal um, to you specifically, but really that that opportunity for that imagination um, and really kind of you know taking your dream or your vision of what's of what's of interest to you and finding a way, finding you know resources or people that can support you uh, in you know seeing that dream you know come to some some larger vision and some opportunity. So maybe that's the way in which you're gathering your data or maybe it's the way in which you're looking at a topic. So really thinking about the fact that uh, if you know many are doing a similar topic, what's that, that imaginative or creative or innovative spin that you can put on that topic that will make it unique, make it stand out, you know, make it be that awesome STEM project. But did you ever um, have a situation in your time judging when you did see multiple projects that, you know, were in the same sort of category topic, um, but they did have, um, you know, very different, different um, flavors to them because people had made them more personal? Um, yeah, definitely. So some opportunities thinking um, specifically around maybe topics that were similar throughout multiple projects, but that personalized spin or that unique spin um, that can be added as well uh, can correspond to some um, might be with yeast. Um, so I've seen in my experience, uh, you know, different ways for measuring um, yeast growth or different ways to kind of, um, you know, look at budding yeast. Um, and so thinking about, again, backing it up with the scientific method, backing it up with evidence as to why that specific, you know, model was selected or chosen, um, but having an opportunity to kind of put a different flair or a different spin on it, or, you know, maybe one person, you know, um, streaked their, their Petri plate uh, with the yeast, you know, in the kind of uh, generic um, way that we do the, the spreading for, for yeast plates, but maybe another person felt that they wanted to test out parts of the alphabet. Um, and so having this opportunity to, instead of streaking um, in, you know, maybe what you see on the image here on the left-hand side of the screen, where maybe it's going in different um, orders as you're kind of spreading out the yeast itself, maybe doing different letters and seeing if that impacts the growth uh, and the general proliferation or the budding or how much of the yeast is generating um, over the same amount of time. Uh, so just different ways in which that can be, um, you know, kind of coming together uh, as an important piece too. Wonderful. I'd love for if anyone here in the in the uh, in the meeting, uh, if you're at that stage and you've got you've got some ideas you want to share with the uh, share with us where you're at, throw it into the chat. I'd love to hear some of the project ideas uh, that you're in from. And you know, we've got uh, Jerry here for another 45 minutes. Uh, now's the time to to pick her brain. Uh, let's let's move on, uh, Jerry, um, and talk about sort of like that personal motivation and uh, how we can uh, turn this idea into a really meaningful one. Yeah, definitely. Um, so this, this personalization piece is really important because it allows us to kind of see the inner scientist in you. You know, what is it that makes you tick? What is it that's on your mind constantly when you're thinking about where am I going to go with my STEM project specifically? We do also have a worksheet that corresponds with this workshop. And so if you're following along for that or the link will be shared in the chat as well. Um, this corresponds to pages one and two in the worksheet, which are some really thoughtful questions to help you kind of think through what you might be uh, wanting to, to use as that next stepping stone for your project itself specifically. Um, because 
it's great that, you know, we might see similar themes throughout different projects. And if you've been to a science fair before, you'll see that projects are sometimes grouped by general category or, or topic area. Um, but every individual has a unique story to share and bringing that to light can really kind of sell your project. It can really kind of be that piece that, that can set your project apart. And so having that opportunity to have what's important to you, what resonates with you, what maybe keeps you up late at night that you're pondering about you know, time and time again, and how can you take that, that little nugget, that little spark and turn it into an opportunity for a STEM project. And I know this corresponds really nicely to an example of a project that uh, I've seen before, which uh, stemmed from uh, the student's um, parent uh, working in a hair salon and doing a lot associated with um, dyeing, uh, dyeing of hair, uh, so colorations, uh, which kind of corresponds to our image on today's screen as well. And what was unique about this is that the student, you know, definitely recognized, and the, because of the parent complaining about the toxicity of some of the dyes that were being utilized and some of the potential concerns, the student took this to the next step and was like, oh, I wanna help out my parent. I wanna figure this out. I wanna do a little bit of testing to see how toxic is this really? And so they were able to take that and turn it into a STEM project to be able to explore the effects of, of different concentrations of hair dye in water levels uh, for, for toxicity measurements, uh, which is just a mind blowing way to take something that was probably just casual dinner conversation <laughs> and turning it into a beautiful STEM project. Yeah, I love this story because it really turns any place, you know, uh, into a laboratory. Uh, any room that you walk into could be the place where you get that next idea. I'm thinking about when I was a kid, my dad owned a billiard shop and he sold pool tables. And I, you know, I, I couldn't even reach the pool table. I just like, you know, throw the balls around on the table and watch them smash into each other. And that really kind of like seeded a lot of my thoughts around asteroids and things smashing into each other and really the formation of the solar system, you know, and all of that stuff that's just, it's a game. It's a very silly thing, but um, I started to make those connections, you know, and if I was in a, if I was a kid right now, I'd be doing something on, um, on physics, on how ricochets work. Um, <laughs> um, I, I love how you can turn any room, any place into a laboratory. Oh, yes, definitely. And I think, you know, for me, you know, I, I mentioned earlier my love for plants uh, and, and botany is a big component for my, my studies. And, you know, I can remember not only from the stories that my father would regale and tell time and time again at dinner about me being a daughter with the scuffed up knees and, you know, sitting there tearing apart leaves, um, <laughs> but also to a time when, you know, there was an unfortunate uh, incident in one of our trees in our backyard, this beautiful, beautiful maple that I used to play with, uh, unfortunately. Fortunately, got sick um, mm. and, and had really bad gall infestation. So if you've ever seen big knots or big pieces that come off of trees, um, you know, those are the galls uh, that can, depending on how bad they get, potentially kill a tree. And so we had to cut down this big, beautiful tree that I had so many memories with. And I can remember being so distraught and so upset. And at that point, I swore off all trees and I wasn't going to do anything with them. And then fast forward 15 years later, I did my graduate studies in, <laughs> in trees and looking at, you know, ways to protect trees uh, <laughs> from the changing climate. So that opportunity, that spark, you know, when you think about that STEM project, what is it that you're interested in? Where is it that you see that, that kind of novelty or that kind of piece that just makes you, you know, turn your head to the side and say, huh, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. You know, yeah, I love I love um, how you can take a piece of conflict in your life or something that makes you even upset um, and try to ask some questions about what's actually going on there. And, you know, that's something that I think a lot of scientists with people, you know, uh, draw from. They draw inspiration from all sorts of places, not just from pure wonderment, um, but also from, I would 
want to figure out a solution for this. I don't, I don't like what's going on. Um, perhaps there could be a better way of doing it. I see a lot of great projects that come out of that kind of mindset. And even last year, one of the winners of the science fair drew upon something uh, that I was really curious where the inspiration was, but it was a lake and um, there was a study around the um, about uh, the composition of the lake. And it all stemmed from this lake was a really important place from her childhood. She used to visit there a lot. So that actual specific place, you know, was what drew her to this, um, to this project in the first place. And so um, really anywhere that you are is the place where you can find your inspiration. Yeah, definitely. The, the world is your oyster, as uh, as that cliche goes, but you're all on your own unique journeys. And I think that's a really important piece is to kind of bring in that individual journey, bring in that uniqueness when you think about your STEM project. Yeah. So on the flip side to that, you know, when once you've uh, figured out your your project and your idea and you're really kind of like pu pulling on some of those passions that you have, there are some things that you do want to avoid. And that is being obvious. Right. Yeah, definitely. And, and so, you know, it's important to keep in mind, even if it's a project that maybe has been done before or done in a similar way or uses uh, a theme or a category or an organism, for example, eggs or yeast, um, that really thinking about what is that unique spin that you can put on that? Or what is that, that personalized question that you can ask related to that, that topic or that area to turn this into that awesome STEM project? So really trying to think about the way in which you're crafting your, your project itself and some guiding questions you know, that you may want to use are on page three in the worksheet as well. Um, but trying to avoid questions that kind of have a yes, no, or obvious answer um, in that piece. So if you're finding lots of literature, lots of background research that says, yes, this is how this happens, this is what's going to lead to, Maybe there's a different spin that you can do. Maybe there's a different method you can try, or maybe there's a different, um, you know, variable that you can be measuring or looking at um, in that capacity. And so I think this is important because sometimes we want to feel safe in the projects that we're doing. We want to get that right answer as we're kind of moving along. And I think it's really important to kind of keep in mind that it's good to be open to getting a wrong answer or maybe even a non-answer. And what I mean by that is that you've done this experiment, it's scientifically sound, you have numerous data points, you've analyzed the information, but it doesn't really have any sort of connection to the hypothesis. You didn't think what happened, it wasn't, didn't line up, it isn't necessarily that it's wrong, but well, this, this topic, this, this fluid isn't necessarily, you know, thinking about eggs and maybe density, this fluid might not have anything to do with the density. It may not impact that at all when we think about the eggs and, and that's okay. You know, it's showing people that this, that you've, you've tried, you were innovative, you tried something different and okay, it, that's not, that, you know, it's a non-answer. I've got friends who, you know, have done all of these different projects and all of these different pieces looking at different aspects of, of certain bacterium and the results just kept coming up null or nothing that, well, this doesn't hurt it, but it doesn't help it. So this isn't of interest, <laughs> you know, next piece. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's really what, you know, science is for the most part, once you get out there and start doing it is you start doing these projects, you start doing some research, really eliminating what it's not. You know, if you think about the biggest mystery in the world, uh, in the cosmos right now, which is dark matter, most of the research that's gone into it, which is basically um, clarifying what it's not, we know what it's not. And eventually, we're going to get down to an answer to what it is. Because then once you kind of figure out those last two things, then you can say, okay, let's put all of our resources into that. But there's many, many steps that you need to get to before you get to that final step. And right here in uh, science fair is that time to experiment and try those things. And that is what judges are looking for, right? 
Oh, definitely, definitely. You know, judges are really kind of looking for that opportunity for you to kind of sell that project, you know, even with that that non-answer. And I like your your connection with the, the cosmos and 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 black matter and and just really thinking about the fact that uh, you know, how can you see where you could go next? Okay, so this this doesn't impact, you know, your question, your hypothesis, but what might you try next time? And I think this is a beautiful opportunity within the science fairs to have that, okay, you tried this one year and here's your results. Well, how are you going to take that maybe for the next year and, and kind of level it up or, you know, try a different piece uh, as you embark and, and you become more comfortable, not only using the scientific method, but also just thinking about, you know, what is that next step? Oh, I'm already getting excited just hearing hearing you talk about this, uh, because this is really what makes science fair so fun is you actually get to get in there and just start doing it, uh, as opposed to just, you know, reading about something in a textbook. I remember I heard uh, an analogy once about uh, teaching science uh, the same way that we teach uh, baseball, you know, like you would never teach baseball by reading about all the history of it um, for many years. And then 10 years later, uh, here's a bat and a glove right? Uh, <laughs> um, this is your opportunity to really get in there and learn. And, uh, um, and so this is it's such a wonderful opportunity. I'm so excited for all the kids that are embarking on this journey. Definitely. And I think, you know, in addition with that, you know, that that opportunity to, to explore, to try those new pieces, it's part of what's going to make it novel and unique for you. And so letting that kind of shine through and bringing that, you know, perspective is going to be an important piece, you know, as you think about how you're going to frame and, you know, what methods you might be using as you embark on that STEM project. Yeah. Uh, before we move on, there's one final piece here that I do want to um, to put out there, everyone, which is um, a word that I actually use a lot in my work at the Space Center when we're interpreting ideas um, and talking anything from rockets to dark matter is two very key words, which is so what? And um, in taking that analogy of why is this important? Um, what is it? Why does it matter? Why does it matter to you? And why does it matter to the judges, right? Yeah, definitely. That's so what? So so why should I care about that? You know, if I'm going around and I'm reviewing, you know, six different projects, why why should I care about, you know, the specific project? So what? What makes it unique or what makes it special? Mm-hmm. But also within that, you know, how is this important? And so maybe there's an opportunity, uh, you know, I know that this is, a, there was an example project I saw that a student, um, their, their, one of their parents had recently been diagnosed with diabetes uh, and they were really concerned and really uh, distraught by um, you know, this news and they wanted to test different fruits for sugar concentrations uh, in different ways. And so they engaged in a project uh, that, that uh, basically found that apples, <laughs> which unfortunately was their parents' uh, favorite juice, <laughs> uh, <laughs> had the highest level of sugar uh, oh, in their no. experiment. And so their, their so what was, was I went to my parent and I told them they can no longer drink apple juice. <laughs> <laughs> and so these little pieces, again, of, of how does it relate to others in the world? Why is it important to potentially other people? Why should I, as a judge who maybe doesn't have diabetes, why should I care about that? What is that piece? Mm. And that's where, you know, bringing in your own unique perspective and that connection, sharing the fact that, you know, this stemmed from, you know, a diagnosis from my parent having this, and I really wanted to test so that they could be healthy, (laughs) you know, is an important piece, or maybe it relates to something in your environment. So thinking about, uh, you know, that climate anxiety that that we were hearing a lot of and and thinking about, and maybe on our minds in different ways as well. And so really kind of thinking about, so what does this matter? And, and this really nicely kind of corresponds to page four in the worksheet as well, which has some really great questions to help you think through kind of that, that uniqueness or that innovation piece. And, and how, can you, how can you share that importance aspect within the project as well? Yeah. And of course, that sets up um, the other really key two word um, um, phrase, which is now what it leads you to the next step of what can I tangibly do to answer the so what? Exactly, exactly. So thinking about the now what, and we'll see this on page five in the worksheet if you're following along there as well. Um, but this is kind of that, that larger discovery or that more, you know, kind of open ended piece. So 
where are we going to go now? You know, we talked a little bit earlier about how maybe, you know, you think about you've tried it one way and you got some results or maybe you realize the methodology wasn't what you were looking for. There's a way that you can kind of make it a bit different in the future. OK, well, how can you modify that, you know, kind of going forward? Um, you know, or how can you expand that? How can you, you know, take it to that next step? But what judges are really looking for is to have it be a tangible next step. And so thinking about if you've you know, done an experiment where you're measuring the impacts of different fluids on egg density, the most likely tangible next step is not going to be a cure for cancer. And so really thinking through what could be that next step. Okay, you've tested these five different liquids. Well, what might you wanna do next? Maybe it's that you want to increase the concentration or you know, concentrate those liquids a little bit more so they may have a larger impact on you know, the density impacts or things. Or maybe take it on a different spin or a different angle and look at a different subset of liquids when thinking about density in different ways. So really kind of being familiar and, and having that recognition of, all right, you know, this is the, the scope of your project right now. Where could you take this? Where could you, you know, go forward with this? What's that now what? Now what? You know, what's that next step? Mm -hmm. And do you see that, that that final piece, that now what, when you're seeing science fairs, does that really, in, you know, encapsulate really what takes, you know, a regular STEM project into that awesome category of, of really solidifying that now what? Definitely, definitely, because I think thinking about that creative aspect is going to be really important to, to kind of help take that project to that next level. Uh, and this is also an area where I've seen uh, students sometimes don't actually include that now what or that that right. kind of next step. So just making sure as you're kind of going through that you spend some time to think about all right, now where are we taking this? What is that tangible next step? What, based on the results from your current experiment or your current project, where could you go next with this? What are you excited about trying next? And that's a big piece that I'll see are, are when students, you know, when I'm talking with them and engaging with them based on their projects, they're like, and now I'm so excited to try this with another, you know, piece, or I'm going to look at milk instead of water or, you know, whatever it is. And they've got some, some background research to support why they're going to go in this other direction, but, but kind of bringing forward that, that, yeah, you've really thought about, you know, where is it that we're, we're going to go next with this? Okay, so hopefully everyone here is now is now got their their juices amped to, to get back to their STEM project. But we do have uh, some more time. We've and we have those worksheets that uh, that you can go to, and we can start to uh, fill those out. And of course, you can fill those out on your own time. But now is a great time if you have questions as you're going through uh, those worksheets. And I definitely encourage you to uh, use those question prompts, um, put into the chat. If you'd like to just turn on your microphone, your camera and ask a question, uh, feel free to. Uh, love to, uh, to hear your voices and your questions. Um, as people are sort of generating some of those questions, Jerry, uh, shall we sort of step through and see if we can answer um, uh, some of these questions uh, on the worksheet? Yeah, definitely. I'm gonna stop the screen share for a second. And so just kind of thinking about the, the worksheet itself and uh, working through some of those questions as well. Um, so the link has been previously shared in the chat. Now, so hopefully you've had a chance to kind of um, pick that up and, and view that um, as well as you're kind of going along. And so I've tried to put throughout today's session um, where you may have an opportunity to uh, think about the corresponding question or uh, really related uh, to the worksheet itself. Um, but kind of thinking about the first aspect really talks about this personal piece. So making it personal, making the project personal. So thinking about, you know, uh, why is doing a STEM project important to you specifically? What is your motivation for doing one? And, you know, maybe it's something that, oh, you know, all of my, my colleagues and I, all of the, my classmates, we're all going to be, uh, you know, doing a science fair project or whatnot. And that's, that's great. That's an important piece, but specifically what, 
about the opportunity to engage in that hands-on, you know, that analogy, Michael, you shared with the baseball uh, and learning, when we learn the theory before we, you know, are handed a bat and a glove and really having that chance to, you know, kind of get your hands dirty um, by engaging in some aspect of the scientific method, you know, kind of finding that, that spark, that little zing that you can use uh, as you continue through that project. So if we just pause there for a second, because I know mm -hmm. that uh, as a creative person, person myself, I've certainly found myself in what people call the rut, the, the creative rut. And what happens is, um, you know, anxiety takes over and then you kind of get into that rut and then you, you kind of, you don't know which way to go next. Um, if you're in that rut and you're having a hard time finding that spark, that interest, um, do you have any ad advice for someone um, to perhaps um, find your way out of there? Yeah, so I think if you're kind of in that creative rut, you know, maybe that, that corresponds to thinking about, you know, not only where are those moments maybe throughout your life that you're kind of like, oh, oh, this is intriguing or oh, I'm not, I'm not really sure where I'm going with it, but also those pieces that maybe kind of keep you up at night or that are constantly on your mind in one way or another, having the opportunity to really kind of think about specifically, uh, and I can screen share the worksheet, worksheet as well, um, you know, just thinking about, um, you know, what is it that is something that is maybe personal to you? What has that independent connection? What has that interest for you to, you kind of uncover a bit more. You know, I know when I started out, um, you know, thinking about just science in general and, and the scientific method, especially in, you know, um, like grades four and five, I, I didn't know that by playing in the dirt and, you know, searching for earthworms that I was really engaging in science. It wasn't clear to me that there was a scientific spin or aspect for that, that I, I could, you know, take forward or I could explore forward as well, uh, which I think is an important piece. So really kind of think about those opportunities uh, for engaging there. Yeah. I can also think about the times in my life that I think perhaps some students, you know, later on, once they get into high school, um, perhaps if you're in high school, there are those pressures, I think, that start to come about what you're going to do after high school, what you're going to do in your life. And I think that, you know, science fair is this opportunity to be, to kind of separate yourself from that. Whatever you choose in your science fair doesn't necessarily need to be connected with, you know, where you're going to take your studies after, uh, after high school. This is your opportunity to experiment and have fun. And many of the uh, past science fair participants that have gone on and, and won prizes, uh, if you check out on our podcast, Let's Innovate, a lot of times their projects aren't connected to what they took in their studies and certainly not connected to what they're doing in their lives now. Um, so, you know, that pressure, I think, is a a lot of it's, you know, it comes from different areas, could come from your parents, could come from teachers, uh, all sorts of places, but certainly yourself. I was certainly one of those kids that put a lot of pressure on myself to always, you know, make the right decision. Um, but hopefully, you know, from this, your, the message can be um, follow your passions and just let those instincts uh, um, take you into a awesome STEM project. Oh, definitely, definitely. And I mean, I know I was very much, I felt that uh, I, I couldn't quite understand where I wanted to go when I thought about science and kind of, you know, next steps or pieces. And I've done, you know, projects on bacterium and fungi and plants and sea slugs. <laughs> <laughs> just having that opportunity to explore and to just kind of see, yep, nope, don't want to do that. Nope, that's too stinky. Nope. <laughs> you know, they grow too slow for me. <laughs> and so really having that opportunity to explore and using your science fair project as an opportunity to, to explore. Maybe it's something that is peculiar your interest. Maybe it is something that's kind of, you know, oh, I'm not, I'm not really sure. You know, we haven't talked about it too much in class maybe, but I'm kind of interested use that as an opportunity to maybe mm. uncover a little bit more, unfold, you know, that topic a little bit more. Yeah. Another question that comes up uh, is, you know, we've talked a lot about why, you know, show, you know, showing your, your inner rainbow, showing that inner passion that you have inside of you can really help your project. So what are some techniques um, that, 
you could use to showcase that science fair project you know it can't just be you know putting making brightly covered slides and and talking really loud you know there's more there's more to it than that yeah definitely so <laughs> in fact uh i think we'll talk a little bit more about that in the march workshop as well about that communication piece yeah uh, and and the importance of you know just because the colors are bright doesn't necessarily make it a well put together, um, you know, visual representation. And so thinking about the contrast piece is important, but judges will be able to, to really kind of see when that passion, when that interest is there, because, you know, you could, you know, look at your poster board or look at your virtual board and, and show and share, um, you know, uh, so I decided to look at the impact of higher temperatures on yeast. And I studied this because I was interested in growth impacts, which is okay, great. Thank you for clarifying that. Thank you for starting to tell me a little bit about your project, but you could also spin it and, and say, have you ever wondered about the impact of high temperatures on yeast growth or thinking about ways in which you're kind of creating this story or this narrative, you know, you are creating a report that's going to correspond with your science fair project as well. But really thinking when you have that time, you're in person or on Zoom or wherever the format is with the judge, yeah. how can you really kind of bring, you know, your, your inner light out? How can you really share that? And that's by kind of creating that story. And so some of those reflection questions on the worksheet are really kind of there to help you guide and to think through, where do you start that narrative? How do you begin to craft this thread throughout? Uh, yes, uh, like, like creating a hook. Um, so how can you draw the attention uh, of the person listening? You know, how can you really keep their, their rapt attention as they're like, oh, oh, great, this is fantastic. Oh yes, this is, this is wonderful. I wanna hear more, I wanna hear more when they're like, oh no, my time is up. But, <laughs> you know, how can you keep them wanting? Um, as you kind of continue and think about developing that project. Yeah, so definitely, you know, put a pin in that. You've already uh, given us a teaser for that next workshop that's going to come up in March. We'll put up the slide uh, with some of that information, but that really does, you know, stem from, you know, storytelling and how you can tell your story and how I, you know, any you know TV show, movies, all kind of like use this formula. You probably haven't uh, realized this yet. As I went to film school, it was like opened up to me like, oh, they all follow this formula. And the same formula is the exact same way that you're gonna tell your science story when you get up there and you're having, um, even if it's just a one-on-one -on -one conversation or you're giving a presentation. Um, so we'll go, we will go more in depth into that communication piece uh, in, uh, in the next workshop. Um, another really interesting question Question uh, from Jennifer Lee uh, about advice about cold emailing professors if you want to participate in student research at labs. Um, also, sub question: uh, How pertinent will projects about COVID nineteen be to pique the interest of judges? I can remember um, last year there was a lot of pandemic related uh, projects uh, which I was really intrigued by. There was a lot of projects that were about helping people which I also really thought as well, because um, we're all going through something. And I think we all kind of gravitate towards how can we make things better? How can we make things easier? How can we make uh, less suffering? All of those types of questions kind of come about in a pandemic. So um, what kind of advice do you have? I guess there's two questions there about cold emailing professors and about COVID-19. Yeah, definitely. Um, so thinking about the, the cold emailing professors piece, um, in terms of general advice, uh, it's really nice if, if the way in which the email is crafted really starts that conversational piece. Um, not just, hi, my name is Jerry, I'm doing a science project, can I be in your lab? Like that, that's, <laughs> that, that, that's not going to win any, any brownie points. You know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna wanna bring somebody like that necessarily into my lab if that's like the hit for the email. So, so really thinking about the conversation and having the opportunity of like, hey, I, I've looked at previous research of yours or I found this article really intriguing or, you know, kind of telling the professors why or what drew you to them, what specifically it is that, that uh, you know, why you're thinking of them for, for engaging in that research project or thinking about it in that capacity and kind of keeping that, that conversational piece. You want the email to be professional, of course, but 
you also want it to have a bit of context and a bit of kind of that exploration of, of so what? Why should a busy professor, you know, be interested in, in, in having, you know, a science fair or a STEM project participant potentially working with them or supporting them? And so kind of thinking about as you're crafting that narrative that can kind of make that awesome STEM project, how can you share that when, when emailing professors, you know, seeking to, to join labs or to support in different ways? Yeah, I think like there's, you know, that can be related to a lot of networking that is going to come up in lots of aspects of your life. I do this all the time when I'm looking for uh, partners, when I'm working on projects. And I think a lot of uh, times it can be um, coming off as authentic, you know, um, like you say, like not just come up and like, I just randomly Googled your name and I've just cut and pasted your name and thrown it in there. Um and uh, hey, can you give me a give me a shot? Um, you know, have you done a little bit of research? What's uh, what does this person do? What type of research they do do they do? Uh, what are other things that you've found? Just to kind of show that you've you've done a you've done your homework, right? And uh, that's those sorts of things. Like they feel small, but they go a long way. Yeah, and I think that really kind of ties in nicely with the resourcefulness too. And so, how exactly will working with this professor kind of fit in with the larger landscape of their STEM project as well? Right. Um, and to get to Jennifer's second question, um, what about COVID-19? We're now in another year of this pandemic. Um, how much is that going to um, you know, affect uh, judges' um, uh, evaluation of the projects? Yeah, so I think um, you know when we go through the judging and we have judges assigned to different projects, it's usually based on you know partially their backgrounds as well. Um, so thinking about uh, you know what the project's looking at as well as the background of the individual um, judge themselves, and so um, I think you know, Michael, as you shared earlier, we're going to see a lot of um, projects just like we did last year. But what we saw a lot of. Uh, and I think this is a, a continued message as well, um, is that, you know, there's a lot of doom and gloom um, that comes along with it, mm. uh, you know, that that um, has impacted so many of us uh, across, uh, you know, BC and the Yukon. And and that, that empathy, that mm. kindness, that desire to help others, that kind of, you know, silver lining. Uh, and I think this is where I've seen so many projects that have just been so innovative and so awe-inspiring for how they took a common problem of disposable masks or, mm -hmm. you know, breathing through masks or other mm -hmm. things like that and try to create, you know, ways in which or strategies to support people, you know, by developing some sort of an, um, an experiment or a project that they kind of use and those results can inform, you know, those kind of next steps. And so I think, you know, judges are really interested in looking at those criteria specifically. So how well the scientific method is followed, uh, how well the results are communicated and that creativity piece as well. And so I think, you know, having COVID-19 projects are great, but it's also great if the project isn't necessarily related to COVID-19 too. Right. I think, you know, one of those things that I found uh, last year, um, and I think why they feel so innovative is, we're all in a very like new landscape, you know, in trying to figure out how to get out of this pandemic. And, um, you know, kids may not realize this, but we never, the world has never really had uh, a pandemic for most people living in it right now, right? There are certain parts of the world that have had to deal with it, but on a worldwide landscape, this is a new place and it's, it's frightening and it's, you know, it's, uh, it's frustrating for all of us. And I think, when you can root yourself in a time and place and a, and, a, um, and a young person doing a science project and bringing that, you know, that innovation with empathy. Um, I certainly, you know, had my, you know, like my ears perked up uh, when I saw that. And I was like, this is, this is where, um, you know, the future uh, is bright for me when I see these kids um, uh, putting their empathy in their project. So that may not necessarily mean to be related to COVID-19 because there's lots of issues out there. Um, I think what I saw there uh, was that putting your heart and your passions into your project stood out. And that's why um, if you look at the, la the last couple of years, uh, the winners, those are the projects that I think stood out. 
Yeah, definitely. And I think this really kind of ties in nicely to what today's workshop was all about, which is making this awesome STEM project and putting that passion, putting that heart, putting that enthusiasm into it and finding what it is about, you know, the work that that really excites you, that really kind of gets you going and, and finding a way to communicate that, which will be our March workshop. Uh, right. Yes, we're almost at the end of this workshop. Of course, if uh, you're here, you've got uh, some questions about all of the stuff we've been talking about how to make your uh, STEM project awesome. Lots of um, prompt questions that are there for you to work on on the worksheet. Uh, please feel free to put any questions uh, you have for Jerry into the chat. Uh, if you'd like to raise your hand um, and turn on your microphone, you're welcome to. Uh, just raise your hand. Uh, let us know that you'd like to ask a question uh, on camera and uh, we will uh, turn uh, you over. Uh, but let's throw up um, those last slides, uh, Jerry, so we can let people know what else is coming up. Um, because we do have uh, some more workshops coming up. Uh, our next one is going to be analyzing uh, those results, um, getting us to that next workshop in March was about communicating uh, reports, presentations, and interviews. Uh, make sure to check those out um, on our website, uh, sciencefairs.ca, uh, the same place that you signed up uh, for this workshop. Um, and if you have any questions about your STEM project, we also have the mentorship project um, that is still ongoing. It's available now until mid-April. This is a great opportunity uh, if you are you know in this place uh, still trying to get uh, those wheels turn in uh, maybe you need you know a one-on-one -on -one conversation this is where the mentorship program can really uh, help you get to that next level um, you know if you're not sure what your results mean you're looking for that expert advice uh, so please go to sciencefairs.ca ask for help slash mentorship uh, that can be a really great um, uh, opportunity for you if that is you in that position. And of course, we also have grants that are available. Deadline is coming up. Uh, so if you have a great idea for that STEM project, and uh, like Jerry said off the top of this workshop, you know, maybe you've got that great idea, but you maybe need just a little bit of funding to get something um, to make that project awesome. Well, there is funding available for you. Uh, the Discovery Foundation STEM Project Grant Awards, project funding to grade four to grade 12 students, BC and the Yukon. Uh, deadline, like I said, is February 15th. Uh, that's funding up to $200 for STEM projects. We'll cover the cost, project supplies, academic journals, lab space, equipment, all of that stuff to make uh, your uh, STEM project awesome. And of course, uh, sciencefairs.ca, ask for help. Financial aid is where you should go. Uh, Jerry, any uh, thoughts on any of that stuff? The mentorship program, have you ever been a mentor yourself? Oh, most certainly, uh, you know, in numerous different roles. And, and I think having that opportunity to reach out to someone who's not only excited, you know, these are volunteers who are excited to provide this guidance, to excited to provide the support for you. But, but I, we cannot stress enough, ask, ask your questions. You know, there's no question too small or too big. You know, the mentor might say, oh, this is really interesting. You know, here are some potential thoughts, you know, but uh, just having that, that space to, to engage with somebody who cares about supporting, uh, you know, our science fair, our STEM project participants as they're continuing forward and as they're moving along, please, please, please take advantage of that. And likewise, you know, check out the next upcoming workshops, lots of great supports coming through Science Fair Foundation BC, but also thinking about those fantastic grants. And so, you know, thinking about that resourcefulness or that creativity that you're wanting to bring forward, you know, 20% potentially of the, the marking criteria, the grading criteria for, for judging, uh, you know, what might that, that additional, you know, $200 um, be able to do to help you and support you as you kind of move along. Awesome. And we also have uh, another ish initiative uh, coming up as well as uh, the weather starts to turn a little bit warmer. Uh, you're going to be getting outside and starting to sweat and you can also sweat for science. You can get uh, a team together, tell your teachers, get your family together uh, and you can register uh, sweating for science. Uh, and uh, this is what uh, it's all about bringing community together. I know that uh, it's been hard uh, on a lot of us not being connected with each other. Um, this is an opportunity to connect with people um, and raise some money uh, for science fair. So if you're a teacher out there or if you are working with a company, lots of corporations, um, you know, do this type of um, 
you know, team building exercises. I know that uh, in my work, uh, we are a small team, but we're certainly all uh, people that go there and exercise. So why not exercise together uh, <laughs> and set some goals for yourself? You know, that's what, uh, that's what it's all about in January, setting some new resolutions and goals, <laughs> right, Jerry? Oh, yes, definitely. <laughs> and I like the community aspect, too. You know, sometimes I need that accountability buddy to help me, you know, get Absolutely. up and get outside. <laughs> yes, you need that motivation uh, because it's certainly, you know, hard right now when you look outside, it's raining. Like, am I going to get out there and go for another run? Well, uh, <laughs> but you need, if you need to beat uh, those kilometers, if, you're, if your colleague is out there uh, going out there uh, as well. All right, folks, that is the end of this workshop. Thank you all so much for joining us for another uh, Science Fair Foundation workshop. Like uh, Jerry said, we're going to be back here for another month. But Jerry, thank you so much for giving us your time and your expertise. Uh, hopefully, uh, anyone that has watched this workshop now has those tools to make their STEM project awesome. Thank you so very much, Michael, for, for hosting. It's been an absolute delight. Uh, thank you to everyone for engaging uh, and being here today. And uh, I really appreciate the participation and engagement. Yes, and if anyone is here and yeah, you came to the, um, the workshop late, we do record all of these uh, these workshops. They will be sent out in a few days, and they will be available on our website as well. Uh, so if you have uh, if you don't see them, then you can just go to the contact link on uh, sciencefairs.ca. But they will be available in a couple of days. Uh, all right, folks, get out there and uh, start making those uh, science fair projects awesome. I will see you all uh, next month uh, as well. Uh, don't forget to. Check Check out Let's Innovate, uh, the, po the podcast uh, that, I, that I host. You can find that on all your podcast platforms. Lots of amazing conversations with past Science Fair participants. All right, folks, take care. <laughs>